Hey everybody, it is Cody here from Wrestling Rage and MIW. I am joined by Giuseppe Colonna. I'm going to ask him a few questions in a brief moment. But before I do that, I want to remind everybody that is watching right now, please, please, please smash the thumbs up. That's right down there. That red button that says subscribe. It's red. Smash it. Make it gray. Right next to that, there's a bell. Click that as well. That bell allows you to be notified when all the awesome content comes to the Wrestling Rage YouTube channel. Also, Wrestling Rage, M-I-Dub, and all the interviews like this one I'm about to do here with Giuseppe is going to be on Podbean. If you scroll down in the description, you can find a link to the Wrestling Rage and M-I-Dub Podbean site. Not only that, there's a, another link down there. If you want to start a podcast, maybe you already have one and you're looking for unlimited hosting, click the link down there for a free 30-day trial of unlimited hosting to Podbean. I chose Podbean because it's awesome. But, Giuseppe, my man, what's crack a and How you doing, brother? Doing all right. You know, hanging in there. It's uh, Some weird times are going through, so... Just doing the best I can, like everybody else, trying to get by and uh, scrape together a little cash here and there. And, you know, but life's good. I can't complain. Right. Got a lot of time to be at home, get projects done. Right. You know, my dog's happy that I'm home. So that's good. That's good. So we're in this. I, I, I We're starting to come out of the weird time, I guess you could say. But as I, I'm back to work. Uh, I started back to work today. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it, I don't mind it. I, I like being, I like working. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind working. I just don't like, I don't have, I work in a factory. There's no fans. I have to wear a face mask. It's really hot. It sucks. Anyways, right. enough about me. Let's talk about Giuseppe, right? The man, the myth, the legend. All right. here. Let's talk a little bit about what are you doing specific, like, projects wise i know you're an artist right you got some art things going on you get tell us a little bit about like are you getting some art projects done during this uh stay at home yeah um i got a couple logos done i did the one for pilgrim uh the one for hagen uh the nomads uh biker like the rocker yeah that's pretty sweet dude um did a little couple other side projects i uh i made a, a painting that i um put into a gallery show oh really um, you're back on that yeah i did a like a like two feet by 18 inches painting of like a woman wearing a surgical mask but it's like all in complete kind of deal uh hmm. i think it's on my facebook page i don't know if i put it on my on my wrestling account but uh it's on my instagram right that's so. That's pretty cool, man. So you entered that into a gallery and now is that a competition or is it just to go on display or it's a it's a it's it's a submission to a gallery to go on display and then the uh top ten entries um get a cash prize and it's submitted into the into their gallery. Um nice. I also fell through a, a British gallery online. I haven't had a sale in almost a year. But um, every once in a while, I'll sell a big, big ass painting. Um, some of my stuff is like six feet by four feet, and I'll have to make a cake for that. And uh, you know, I had one ship to Ireland um, to a folk singer over there. I had another one ship over to LA to a CEO nice. over of a company. So it'll say their name, but it won't give me much information aside from name. Right. So then. Facebook stalk them to figure out who got my painting. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, that's cool though, man. You know, you, a couple dreams that you, you do, you know, you got, and uh, you know, it's hard cause you bounce around between like really fine art on canvas, like oil paintings and stuff. And then like the more graphic drawings, like the logos and stuff. So, um, and then I got skateboard decks I'm working on and oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, so I I dig doing the skateboard decks. Those are a lot of fun. Um, I usually enter one every year in downtown Rochester uh, for their skate deck art show. Uh, but I don't know if that's happening this year. And right. as I'm making my own beer. 
Now, so, yeah, I see that. How did you get involved? How did you start making your own beer? Is that something that you've always done, or is that uh, like did you just kind of like, hey, you know what, I'm going to try this one day and and did it, and then was like, hey, I like it, and hey, let's do it. Uh, my rugby teammate and the best man at my wedding. I mean, we are we are brothers till the end. Uh, his name's Brandon Jones. He got me into brewing. He uh, was brewing his own beer, entered some competitions, took some uh, first place spots over at like the Renaissance Festival and stuff, probably a good 12 years back and then just stopped brewing. And then I was like, I wanna learn to make beer, beer, man. So he started teaching me. And then shortly thereafter, he moved to California, left me with all his beer supplies. And we collaborated <laughs> back and forth on different beers and ideas. And we're trying to kind of create our own company our own brand um, and start distributing the beer. But it's difficult when you have two people in two different parts of the country trying to create like a Midwestern and like a West Coast branch of the company. And then because it's 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 the little things with right. the beer. His water is different than my water. So we have to like do chemistry to match the water profiles. He might not get the same grains I get, might not get exactly the same hops i get so it's all kind of fluctuating and it's hard to to get it pinpoint that's crazy man yeah yeah but making beer is just it's a fun passion i mean my wife could kill me because it eats up like six hours on a saturday morning so i'll try to get like five six a.m to start brewing that way i'm done before noon that's insane man wow yeah that's a lot of work for 50 60 bucks i yield like two and a half cases of beer so like 50 some odd bottles which isn't bad um it really depends though on like you know if i beer if i brew like a belgian triple which is like 12 and a half percent that shit's gonna cost me like 80 bucks because wow. it's grain wow that's but, insane yeah, man, I like making my own beer yeah, right that's... now i'm fruit ipa Right, that's cool, man. That's really cool. You're an artist. You're you're a brewer. You're I'm an art brewer, ex rugby player, uh, and pro wrestler. Right. So, so you talk. We you, before your wrestling career, you played rugby. Mm-hmm. Um, now were you semi pro, professional rugby? What? How did that go? It was like semi-pro. We paid to play. I was a, it's weird because it's not weird, but it's weird. We were like at the same level as like, you ever heard of the DCFC, the Detroit City Football Club? Okay. It sounds familiar. Team out in Detroit. Okay. We were at that same level, um, unsponsored, unpaid. We paid our own ways. I used to pay my own trips to go to Colorado. We played nationals, took second in the country. Oh, wow. Uh, shit we take first in the midwest like every year um and we usually take first or second in the eastern seaboard uh take first in a tournament down in uh savannah georgia like every year and then uh in the summertime i used to play in a who's who of like midwestern players we were called the east side hyenas and we'd go out in the apollo creed shorts <laughs> with with like american flag jerseys and uh and just play our asses off over there against canadian and american teams it was the can we'd usually take first or second every year. Um, and I had teammates that played American pro. And then I had teammates that came over from like Tonga, Samoa, Fiji. Um, and those guys were, came here to play and we'd, we'd pay those guys like a decent salary, nothing crazy, like 20 grand a year, if, if that to come and play for us, but it was good money for them to take back home. Right. So they play for us. And, our money would be helping pay them right. to play for us and make us better. Right. Um, but you could tear up. So there's four tiers. And then like there's pro rugby, which I have a feeling it's going to sink due to this pandemic it might not exist anymore. But even in the, in Europe, it's the same thing. There's the pro level teams mm-hmm. and then there's below that. And you just kind of tear up kind of like baseball. Gotcha. That, that makes sense. So how did you go from rugby which, you know, rugby is no joke. You know, wow. I, I personally, you know, I played football, okay, the American version of football in high school and junior high and all that. And, uh, but 
there are no pads in rugby. No, that's it's um, and it's I brutal. Wear, <laughs> I'm a little like head condom. It's like a, it's like a <laughs> that straps on and little foam shoulder pads. As I was getting older, yeah. Um, how I got into it. So, I guess I'll tell some things I didn't tell on other interviews I did. I because that's important. I uh, <laughs> I wanted to play football originally as a kid, okay. and I actually collapsed my skull when I was seven years old. You can see there's like a concave area over here because oh. it's all like highlighted, and then it just goes to shadow. That's a dent in my head, and they told me I could not play football because. It was too rough when I was in seventh grade. Um, then in eighth grade, I wanted to start wrestling. So I went and saw my doctor and my doctor was like, no, man, you're just, your skull's thick as all hell. You can do whatever you want. Um, I don't really come off as a nervous kind of guy or the kind of guy that's not puts himself out there, but I was like too afraid to play football in eighth grade, ninth grade, because I had missed a year. And I wasn't really savvy at football. I grew up European, so my dad's a soccer fan. And mm -hmm. I didn't watch football growing up, so I didn't know what I was getting myself into. So I just kind of went into wrestling. And then the rugby I picked up in uh, college, my uh, freshman year in college, I started playing rugby um, for a men's team that was absolute like beer league, like beer league softball rugby level. Um, a lot of drinking, a lot of partying, a lot of losing. And then uh, when that team folded because they couldn't play, pay their dues to USA Rugby, um, about sophomore year in college, uh, my best friend I was talking to you about off air and myself and another buddy of ours decided to start a team at Oakland University. So I am one of the founding fathers of Oakland University Rugby. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, man. I coached that team too uh, when I was in my late 20s. When I went back to college, I didn't know what to do with myself. The team was about to fold, so I went and started coaching Oakland University, and I coached them to a state runner-up. Uh, that's, that's awesome. 2009. That's that's really awesome, man. That's a story, you know. That's a story that you yeah. get to tell about something that you're passionate about, and you can tell that you're passionate about it just the way you talk about it. Is you know, if you weren't passionate about it, you wouldn't know all the information. You wouldn't know any of that stuff. So that that's really awesome, man. Now, from rugby, at some point you start professional wrestling or start training in professional wrestling. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you came out of X XJ school? Yeah. Yes, okay. I came out of um, XJ school. Uh, that was back in 2010, actually. I was as, I want to say I was his second class. Don't quote me on it. Okay. I might have been third, but I was right after Ace Evans's class, and it was just me and one other guy. Maybe okay. there, were, maybe there were three of us, but only me and one other guy made it out, and he no longer wrestles. Oh, damn! Um, I was back in 2010. I was uh, working at a place in Auburn Hills called Palazzo de Bacci, and I met Chuck Whedon. Oh. And I was shooting oh, the Chuck. shit. About, yeah, I was shooting the shit at a different job about wrestling with a buddy of mine. I'm like, I got to do this thing. Like, I got to do this thing. Like, I grew up loving wrestling as a kid, and when I was really young. I never got to watch Monday Night Raw. My parents wouldn't let me. It was all superstars on Saturday. Saturday morning, uh, we lived at grandma's house during a move transition and I'd wake up um, with my uncle Joe, who does, uh, who now does, he's now a uh, Vincent Fillery and he does the uh, commentary for Rising Action. I know who you're talking I'd about. Wake up, kind of hung over from college and we'd watch sat uh, superstars on Saturday morning, every morning at grandma's house. And then like wrestle in the living room and you know we're only like <laughs> eight years apart so right. it was a it was a good time and that's how i got my addiction into wrestling i think i was like the only road dog fan right <laughs> that's i there i don't know I'm, i've never really been a big road dog fan i mean i i what he does now for the professional wrestling but it wasn't my that i wasn't a wwe guy that's the thing you know I, I was a wcw I'm going through all the uh, nitros right now. And then every time there's a pay-per-view, I watch the pay-per-view and then continue on to the nitro. That's awesome. Uh, the only thing I'm leaving out are the clashes. Yeah. That's cool, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so you go through, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar. I know that every school has a different way of doing things, right? Um, some have a, 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 a set of weeks that you go through. Some say, hey, you know, when I tell you, that's when you're ready, you know. 
But so after you get your your sign, stamp, seal, and you're like, hey, all right, you're ready, man. You can go out. You can do your thing. Uh, when you went out and you started to venture out into the world of independent wrestling in Michigan, right? Was it hard for you to get into the organizations to to start uh, wrestling, or uh, you know, did you have yeah. to beat the streets? Yes, it was, and no, it wasn't. Okay. Um, yes, it was, because to get into places like XICW, um, I'm trying to think who else was running at that time, Clash, uh, even Bubba, like, you had to go through the ropes, and you had to work your way up the ladder, set up the ring, do what you had to do, and, and really work. Um, thankfully Xavier justice had a hell of a grinding schedule and I graduated in the summer. So we were doing a lot of fair shows. Like every weekend we had a different fair we were doing, right. whether it was El Sandusky, Memphis, uh, just going all over to fairs. And then he does Mandor Mandurance at the Genesee County fair. And that is three matches a day over seven days wrestling that you can put in and it's all after 5 p.m so you have like the five o'clock show the seven o'clock show the nine o'clock show and you're just getting matches and getting matches in um so i was fortunate enough for to do that and then i had alcatraz over at uwa who really saw something in myself and uh hakeem zane and was really really putting us in some good positions and uh you know, I was moving up that ladder and eventually I just had to call it quits. I wanted to go back to school, get my teaching certification. I was still playing rugby and I couldn't do it all. Right. Um, and I was actually ring announcing at XICW at the time too, which was a lot of fun. And I can't thank Malcolm enough for that opportunity. That's awesome. I didn't know that you did ring announcing at XI. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's when I mean, it was just a handful of shows, maybe three or four. Wow, what, what when was this? Like do you like like two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. Oh, okay. Back, it was real little. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I uh I didn't know you did that. I learned something new every day, man. This this is one of the things why I love doing this is you know, even if this never pans out to be any I've made some great friendships with guys like yourself and I learned new things about guys all the time that I never even knew, and even some of the ladies too. But uh, that's why I really enjoy doing this. One of the reasons why, obviously, because there's some other uh, perks. We'll say. <laughs> uh, so you got into wrestling and, and you ended up going back to school and things like that. Now, um, the hard part about wrestling uh, 10 years ago was I was in a tag team. So me and my tag team partner couldn't always collaborate on getting to certain shows at the same time or like getting our shit together where we got to go do this show. We got to go do that show. We right. tag for Xavier justice and um, back for Johnny bad wheels. When he had the company way back when we had yeah. a feuds against brew crew uh, back mm -hmm. when it was Loon and rough house Rob. My tag team partner was ace heavens. Oh, no kidding. See, I yeah. learned something new. I didn't know that either. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. That's good stuff right there, man. Well, you know, I'm not really familiar with, I didn't really get into independent wrestling until about three, four years ago. I didn't even know it existed, you know, and it's shame on me. I get it. I know bad Cody. Okay. <laughs> but once I did find it, man, oh man, am I hooked, dude? It's like crack. The Indies there it's there's a lot more passion in it like a lot more drive a lot more determination it's you know it's 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 like rugby for me it's watching those local teams play and really work their way up the ladder and want to be somewhere and be somebody mm -hmm. you see a lot of drive and determination yeah absolutely i totally agree with that and i one of the things with you know talking about xicw you know you're talking about you did a few now. You did some announcing for them. They got the proving ground that goes on where they have the the rookies. Some guys, you know, maybe one, two years in. Some guys maybe have more because you know if you don't know the rules at XI, you if you've never worked XI, you're a rookie. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So like guys that's got 10 years in like Sean Tyler is considered an ex ICW rookie, but you know, these guys come in and get to work with some of the guys that have been in the business for quite a while, like Movado, right? Yeah. There's a name. Okay. Talk about some awesome there, right? You know, you see the, the drive that those guys have like electric Ely, who was in that, in this past season, you know, that guy right there, man, talk about somebody that's got to look, I'll tell you right now, that guy's right. going places. Uh, but wrestling, you went to college, you did your rugby thing, and then you come back to the independence. How, when, roughly, how, how long ago was it that you came back to wrestling in the independence? November 17th, 2017. Awesome. So it was only. <laughs> and I remember that because it was the day after my birthday that I. Xavier Justice was over in India. Uh, I can't remember the call letters for the promotion, but he was training the great college students, and Ace Evans was running the school um, mm. over in the area. And so I started going and training again, uh, which was a bitter pill to swallow because I knew a lot of stuff, but I lost a lot of stuff. So I really had to humble myself in the training room and realized that I, I lost a lot of what I had learned and I needed to kind of gain it all back again. Right. Now, was that, do you think that was more because of not, you know, keep like the muscle memory, not, not continuing to practice and things like that? Do you think that's what it was? Yeah, that's the blade sharp. I mean, I had the opportunity, shit, back in like 2013, 14. I did a show over at the, the one of the schools I used to teach at and uh, brought Johnny Bad Wheels in as the promoter. And we had his ex company do it, not um, Detroit style, but what it was before that. And me and DBA actually had a tag match against the Nomads in the main event. And I was just Mr. Toko, the school teacher, who got himself <laughs> in a little wrestling trouble. Uh, after one of the nomads slapped me on stage at a school, uh, at a, at a school, um, assembly. Okay. So like we had no tickets sold that day, like not a single one. And I told the principal, I'm just like, gather all the kids, just get them all. And she's like, we haven't sold a damn ticket. And these kids got to go to Washington, DC. I'm like, just gather them all, just get them all into the auditorium. And we had an anti-bullying thing. And then I had Mo Evans just slap the shit out of me. And he slapped <laughs> hey, right out of my mouth. I, literally went flying backwards on my ass did not sell it like it actually hurt like hell i had a palm print on my face wow. um and the kids were just like i gotta go i gotta see mr toko whoop this guy's ass these are like fifth graders saying i gotta see him whoop his ass <laughs> that's awesome though yeah that auditorium was <laughs> packed we had wrestling fans there and like all the kids from the school like even the high schoolers came from upstairs that's cool because the hell was going on so that was a fun time right. uh, so i've been back in between too and it's almost always with ace he brought me to darcy's school and i lasted about a month training with andrew darcy uh because then i was gearing up for a national championship belt right. with rugby and i had to stop and then uh like i said uh truth's always been good to me and always had those doors open for me too um so i can't thank him and Mavado enough for what they've done to to help open my eyes and uh marty jones too man yeah uh, and i crammed in four different training sessions in the united kingdom right. plus or shit. yeah that was cool to see you like you took us on your journey with you that was pretty cool when you went over there what what sparked that like was it just something you wanted to do and said hey i'm gonna go do it or was it some marty like was here in october uh xj brought him here as part of a training seminar um i missed one of the training sessions because I had a show over at Horror Slam okay. where Rob put me through the table and it like exploded. <laughs> um, so I did that show, but there were three training sessions, Marty, and I worked my ass off in those sessions. And I think he thought it was kind of lip service, but I was like, I'm going to come. I'm, I'm going to come to to Manchester. I'm going to see you. I want to train with you. And he's like, all right, kid, you know, whenever you make it, da, 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 whenever you make it. And then like 
that was in October of last year, uh, two years ago, I guess. And then I started like getting a hold of him over the summer. I was like, I'm gonna be coming in like October. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in Manchester. And you know, after some talking, some convincing why I wanted to be there, he set me up with a place to stay. The airline ticket from Sicily to Manchester wasn't too bad, a couple hundred bucks round trip. And then the stay was a little the cost of living's expensive there, like food, oh, yeah. beer, gas money, because I'd help Marty out with gas. But I mean, he drove me to hell and back. I think our furthest training session was four and a half hours away. Wow. That's and I crazy. even got to funeral with a fellow wrestler. Uh, that's why I was holding the ring bell because we did a 10 bell salute for him. And I got to meet a ton of professional wrestlers from world of sports guys that, you know, have been in the ring with Johnny St. and Marty Jones. Um, and I've been like all over that country wrestling. So that was a really cool experience. Yeah. I, I went to London East. I was in the East, East London and uh, yeah, it's not cheap there, bro. Not at all. No. no, my wife and I just got back in December too. Cause we did, she wanted to go. So we did uh, Manchester, Edinburgh, uh, down into Sussex, all the way down by the beach and mm-hmm. then in for the weekend. Right. And I got to, while I was there too, I convinced her and she was cool enough to let me go find Marty again and do a wrestle at a birthday show for him. That's cool, man. That's really awesome that you got to do something like that. You know, so you get back in there, you're wrestling, you're doing your thing, you get you're involved with you were involved with a lot of promotions here in the state at, after 2017 coming back in and doing that. And one of those promotions is Rising Action Pro Wrestling. You know, you're currently the general manager over there. Uh it's a I talk about with the guys uh, a few times about rising action. What I like about rising action is the premise behind the promotion is giving some of the younger guys a platform that they might not necessarily have say at a bigger promotion that has top notch talent that is taking the big time bookings and, and seeing all the main events. Right. Um, not, that doesn't take away from anything that rising action offers either. You know, you don't say that I'm not going to say, you know, that they don't have great stars because they do. They have guys like electric Ely that have put on great, great matches. Robert Keel, that guy, what a great bad guy. I got to tell you, he is a good bad guy, you know? Um, But rising action wrestling, tell me a little bit about, how you got involved with rising action wrestling, because not only you are the general manager, but you're part of the promotion as far as, you know, booking and things go as well. Um, well, it started back when there were three of us and, uh, we were running the promotions out of, uh, of VFW in New Baltimore. Um, I had a lot of big ideas, a lot of things I wanted to move forward. And, <clears throat> we had gotten to a point where we had decided to get our own ring and I'll take the credit for finding the venue. Um, the bowling alley was originally our sponsor. And then when we couldn't get the VFW hall booked for the date we needed, I asked uh, diesel concert lounge, diesel theater in the venue, if we could, you know, sign a contract and start using their venue and they were all for it. Um, and they were all gung ho about it, so that's when we decided to go there. And I'm ecstatic that we made the change because absolutely, it really gives our product uh, like a unique quality when you have a concert stage and overhead lighting and color change lights for guys to come out to, and like their entrances are all differentiated. A real sound system, yeah. um, like it just gives it a totally different feel. The barricades. You know, mm-hmm. have, being able to set up merch tables in the back, uh, serve alcohol, food, all that stuff. Um, a real indie feel, if you ask me. I, yeah. I, and I love that. It's, it's hard because I want to be humble. I really do. Mm-hmm. As, I, as I post something on Facebook that says, don't be humble. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really do want to be humble about it. But, like, at the same time, the 
what we're producing there at Rising Action, like, has a far more different feel than a lot of other promotions in the Midwest and the, the United States in general. Um, you know, I'm not going to say our talent's up there yet or the quality of matches up there yet. These boys and girls have a, have a long road to toe ahead of them. But I'm, I'm happy to be putting new talent out there. And because they're willing to do anything, and I don't say that in a manipulative or bad way, mm -hmm. I say that in a way that they're willing to put themselves out there and try new things to get noticed. I like that. I like that. You know, um, a prime example of that is Ultimate Master, formerly Richard Dick, Shaggy, whatever you want to call him, the mummy. He's tried a handful of things and nothing really panned out for him. You know, some, some vets gave him static for putting on Muay Thai shorts, but he has, he has a martial arts background. He is an ex-Marine, like the guy can go. So why not showcase that badassness in a different way with the Muay Thai shorts and the armbands and like, you know, make them, make them look like, uh, like something out of blood sport. Right. Like boxer. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, oh, the, guy, the guy didn't, you know, he's, he's just, just squashing people. Well, he's a big motherfucker. <laughs> like show that. Right. Come I on. Let's talk about this. Right. I, yeah. I, I enjoy rising action. You know, Danny and I go uh, to the shows and we usually sit off to the side there, you know, uh, and, and we film some of the matches and we watch and we have a blast, have a good old time yelling, screaming, hooting and hollering, doing our thing. And it is a fair, it is a family friendly show. Uh, there are kids there that enjoy it and there's, there's not swearing or like that. It's, you know, there might be a little here and there, a slip, but I tell the guys to keep it PJ 13. Yeah. Damn are okay. The late, if the late want to call each other a bitch that's fine but i don't want to hear it from a guy's mouth right we might get one f bomb every three months yeah that's about it but and it is it's a great place and the diesel concert lounge like you said you you said you're glad you made the change i i'm glad you did too because that place is freaking amazing you know you walk in you come in through the bowling alley you got all the bowling and then you got to walk through the pinball arcade that thing is amazing that dude that's awesome, yeah. Yeah. Then you walk through there, and you're in another bar, and then you go through this bar to another bar, and it's like, oh man, I, I'm in, I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'm in heaven. Yeah. It's like a labyrinth to get to the promised land, right? Yeah, <laughs> the good stuff. As you start getting involved in rising action wrestling, uh, you got some, you had some medical issues, and uh, unfortunately you've had to kind of take a step back from the physical side of things a little bit. Um, care to tell us, you know, what you want to tell us, what, what exactly happened and what caused you to have to pull back away? Yeah. Um, uh, the evening of January 1st, I was out to dinner with my parents and my sister, brother-in-law, my wife. Uh, we were just hanging out having a good old time, came home, um, you know, didn't have to work the next day. Wife and I were just staying up late, watching TV. Then I went to bed. And the next thing I know, I am being woken up with EMTs over me. And I think I tried swinging at them because <laughs> I wow. didn't know what was going on. Right. right. Uh, uh, from what my wife tells me, I tried to decline the ambulance ride. Um, and then lo and behold, I start to find out that I had a seizure while in my sleep. Um, I have had a lot of concussions in my lifetime. Um, none that I know of from wrestling, but rugby was not kind to me. Right. Uh, I wasn't kind to myself. I did a lot of leading with my head, a lot of tackling to the inside when I should have been head to the outside, double legging. And I know better as a wrestler that right. even in amateur wrestler that my head should be to the outside um but i did a lot of things and that's actually what got me out of rugby is i had back-to-back -back concussions in, the, in my last game oh, wow. um and you know idiot me after a year of sitting on my ass i'm gonna go pro wrestle again don't worry <laughs> fake um 
but no, it hurts. I mean, it really does wear and tear on your joints, uh, your muscles, uh, the, the kind of callus you have to build to take those impacts. Um, but from what the doctors have told me, it's not necessarily due to any of my concussions. It's due to that initial blow of collapsing my skull um, when I was seven years old, falling off a roof. A lot of the damage is in that area. I was in Europe. Um, they didn't do anything about it. They just kind of iced my head, put me on steroids. Uh, I don't remember getting any CT scans or MRIs or EEGs, none of that. So um, from what I'm being told, the, the like brain chemistry is just changing as I get older. Uh, which could cause me to have seizures. I've also been told that 30% of the world's population has one seizure once in their lifetime. Um, it'll be, I have to get through the month of June and then I'll be driving again come July. And I'm on meds for the next two to three years. Um, if I have another seizure, then it's another six months, no drive. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm just kind of going with it. Am I antsy? Do I want to wrestle? Do I want to play rugby? Do I just want to fight in general? Yeah, put me up there with Tommy Vendetta. I'm crazy, man. Right. I, I need to get out and do something. And like, uh, you know, even like Brazilian jiu-jitsu or anything. I know that's your background. Like anything to, yeah. to get get this pent-up aggression out. Oh, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Lifting weights, running, it just doesn't do it for me. Right. It. Uh, I like the physicality. I like the combat me- combat mentality and the camaraderie that comes with it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's. Uh, I n- have dealt with uh, m- my own personal head injuries. I suffered from a traumatic brain injury when I was 16. My oldest son had seizures and had a brain tumor and had to have a brain tumor removed at Children's Hospital in in Detroit. So I know how serious this is and. Um, and it's unfortunate, but I'm glad that, you know, something happened and that you were able to find out before something even more serious happened. And we still have you with us. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm fortunate for that. And it is unfortunate that you have to have taken a step back from wrestling. But with that has come a little bit of positive, right? Because now you are mentoring guys, right? You're, you're, you're become a uh a mentor and not only that a, ro- a a general manager for rise general manager right i want to make sure i say it right general manager all right i want to make i don't want i don't want no heat bro all right but no. now you, and you're also a general manager uh manager of Raz, rising action wrestling and get to have a little more um control of things that happen within the actual event so you know I know that it, the initial blow of, of having to step away was really hard. You know, I seen a lot of the, the messages and things that you were doing. Uh, how, what's it been like from going from that and then coming into this and, and where are you going from here? It's, it's been different because, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too long before the COVID hit. So, I didn't miss much. Right, right. Um, at the same time, like, it was an honor being inducted into the Pure Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame by my mentor and friend, Xavier Justice, by my ex-tag team partner and friend, um, Ace Evans. Uh, I'm still taking him up on the, the off. I'm pretty sure I'm officially a nomad. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. it. Those were his words. Right. At Hall of Fame induction. You are officially a nomad, so... So maybe I am. (laughs) There you go. But it's, yeah, it's just been different. Um, Trying to figure out my way. Uh, I have like an addictive personality. So when my mind gets set on something like the brewing, the art, the wrestling, um, you know, my wife often says like, you're never focused on like, you have so many hobbies. Like you need to focus on, on the real world around you. And it's like, I know, but all these hobbies, like, they are what entertain me. They're what, you know, and, and the vacation, like the vacations we take together too. You know, I got to shout her out for that. Like every summer is a 
different trip for us. So like, these are the things I live for is the passion of seeing the world, being around people. And, um, you know, even mentoring, I, I never thought I was in any position to mentor anyone about professional wrestling. I, I don't think I have a, a good tenure under my belt to do so, honestly. You know, I'm, I'm no truth martini. I'm, I'm no Xavier Justice. I'm, I haven't been around the world, been to these places. I, I, I have, but I haven't. Right. But you know uh, what, though? What you do have is life experience, right? You, when you think about it, right? You've been there where you've had multiple things going on and you've had to make a choice, right? Do I go off and be the rugby guy or do I continue on my professional wrestling career? Or do I make take a pause and go do this? And you can talk to these people and talk to these guys about things like that and making those choices. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I tell Nolan Edward every time I talk to him, pack your shit, move to Japan. <laughs> he's mm-hmm. like, he's like, but, but I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm like, pack your shit, move to Japan. Just go sleep on a dojo step, man. <laughs> like, do it. Come a young boy. Like, mm-hmm. you want to get big fast? That that's That's what my vision of how it could work for you. Yeah, and he would fit in nicely over there too. Boy yeah, Woody. Absolutely. Boy Woody. What a guy. Yeah. What a talent. You know, and yeah, I guess another side I know a thing or two about apprenticeships. I was a tattoo apprentice and it was sitting my ass outside the tattoo shop waiting like, can I be an apprentice now? Can I apprentice now? Can, can I do it now? What about now? <laughs> <laughs> getting some of the knowledge and learning and my tattoo artist, the guy who was teaching me went to jail as well. So there, there went that dream. Uh, um, that's a common thing in that industry. <laughs> but, but yeah, like, you know, like as an apprentice, they teach you things and give you things uh, aside from knowledge, right. but yeah, you have to rub the toilets and pack the bags and do all that stuff. Right. You know, I, I think it'd be a good fit for the kid, for the young man. There you go. Now, going forward, you know, what are you planning on doing? What, what, what's your plans as far as professional wrestling goes? We got some big things. Now, I know Rising Action Wrestling has a brand new shiny belt. And what a freaking – that I, I'm going to go on records here, and, prob- and I'm going to say this. This is probably the nicest belt in the Michigan Indies right now because that belt is – Woo, that's big ball and shit right there, boy. Let me tell you right now, that's that's motherfucker Kanye West will wear that around his fucking neck. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I can't take all the credit for it. Um, I came up with the main plate design, and then I sent it on over to Joe Perry, uh, Jay Piono, and he did some editing, some tweaking with it. Uh, I told him kind of what I envisioned in the side plates, And then he added the mountain and the moon and like, well, we're rising action. Like there's a mountain in that logo. Right. I'm like, yeah, like do the F and F plates, all that shit. All I got to say is if you love that belt, wait till you see what the eventual tag titles will look like. (laughs) I'm looking forward to it. Who, but can I ask who made the belt? Uh, The belt. So some people in the business might think I'm a dick for this, but I bypassed, the whole American system and went right to the source um, in Pakistan. Uh, there's a company called, why am I drawing a blank on them right now? Oh my God. Uh, championship belt. Um, first choice championship belts Okay. out of Pakistan designed it. I will say, I will give the guy credit where credit is due. He did a phenomenal, amazing job on it. But I have been working with him since like December to get this done. I was kind of nervous sending money over to Pakistan to get it done. But it is genuine cow leather, like just done to the nines. He did a phenomenal job. And then with the pandemic happening, excuse me, shipping it was a nightmare. And we're still waiting on it. Those pictures were taken in Pakistan. It should be here for er, June 1st. I'm sorry. I should have it in my hands June 1st. Um, but it was, yeah, a bit of a nightmare. Just you know, getting it done and dealing with it and, like, the pressures of, like, oh, I need I need the money to do this. I need more money to do this. And it's like, 
I've paid you. I paid you this amount. I paid you that amount. It's like, and that was like, well, what about we do the tag belts right now? And it's like, what if we hold off because a pandemic's coming? Yeah. And you get this belt done. Yeah. So it's it, it is. It's I felt like uh I felt like a uh supply chain buyer for an automotive company. <laughs> That's crazy for a, a wrestling belt, dude. That's nuts. For a championship for belt. I mean, he did a great job and I I'm I'm ecstatic about it. I'm stoked. It looks amazing. It does. It looks great from what I see from the pictures and and even people like somebody like Drake Jacobs puts out there that he wants a to come in and, and take a shot at that belt. Yeah, that's on his list. That is on his to do list. Yes, it is. Now there's something else on his list and it's right at the top is beat up Tommy Vendetta because all the schmack Tommy Vendetta has been talking, but I don't know if that's a list I want to be on. I don't want to be on a list that says I want to kick or from Dre Jacobs that says he wants to kick my butt. I don't, I don't want to be on that list. I'll, I'll take your spot. Man, <laughs> I, could well, then, a, I could use a good fight. Well, you, um, you're a trained wrestler. I'm not. That's you're the tra- diff- you, just, you got Brazilian jiu-jitsu training. Well, no, actually I'm tongue sudo. Oh, tongue sudo. Right. Yeah, you're okay. over uh, Alex's. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Alex's parents are at, well, Alex. No, and his parents- he's a great guy. Like I said, I trained uh, with Darcy a bit. So we'd go over yeah. to the dojo in the back. Yep. Uh, that school met- was there for a minute. Person. Yep. Yep. Good stuff there, man. Yeah. That, that's where my, where I started to find independent wrestling, you know, going to those shows and watching those guys train Mark, Daniel, and all those guys in Alex. Train. I've, I've been in the ring with Mark. Yeah. Um, and if I could, Mark has, has a wrestling background and just some of the chain I've done with, uh, Cyrus Satine has been some of the most fun chain I've ever done in my life. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a gem, man. I can't, he's down there and he's doing his thing and I can't, I love it when he comes home, man. I really do. Yeah. So going yeah. forward, as far as, you know, you got a championship tournament when we come back, you know, how we do it, where we go from there. We don't know yet, but when we get there, we're going to have a tournament. We know that for the belt. Um, but as far as Giuseppe's going, you got any short-term, long-term goals for you in professional wrestling? I mean, just to get more eyes on rising action, that is – my main focus um i might try to make some time to do some commentary uh for pure pro wrestling uh mm-hmm. when i get a chance um prior to the pandemic hitting uh there was a show out in west michigan i was supposed to go ring announce for um that the promoters were really excited to have me on board to ring announce so it's going to be taking more of a role in in a uh, I, I don't know what how to describe the role a, a non physical role non physical uh, I got you as far as production roles or like uh, management roles I'm gonna keep that strictly to rising action but you know if there's companies out there that need a ring announcer need a manager hell I managed Peter Be Beautiful at uh, the yep. Holly Shack show and yep. that was out time so yeah it was and you were and you did announcing there too yep. huh. And you were now you did uh, play by play commentary there with uh, with John and Josh. Yeah, so. you were double duty that night. Yeah, yeah, I had I had a fun time. Yeah, it that was, was a fun show. I fun. I was I was had a good great 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 time. Uh, <laughs> under the table, I also uh, kind of co booked the show too. There you go. Because we're running around with chickens like chickens with their heads cut off, and Logan <laughs> just hands me the paper like get these matches together and figure out this battle Royal. I'm like, I got you brother. No problem. There you go. Uh, oh, so, you That's know, good, I, though. I, I first to raise my hand and last to leave. Yeah. Yeah. I always say, if you can't be first, be the last, if you can't be, a, if you can't be the first guy there, be the last one to leave. That's always been my thing. Always the yeah. thing I say, well, listen, Giuseppe, I want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Listen, guys, I'm going to put down in the description his social media links 
And I'm also going to put Rising Action Wrestling's social media links as well so that you can follow them on their social media and you can follow him on his to see what he's up to. And maybe, you know, maybe you're an organization that needs a play-by-play guy. Here's one. Need a manager? Here's one. All right? Give him a call. Send him a message on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever he's got, and he will respond, and he will come and hang out in your organization for sure. Thank you so much. Bro. You're welcome, man. Uh, I look forward. I, I I am chomping at the bit to get back to some independent wrestling, brother. I want to see independent wrestling. I don't care about this crap that's on TV. All I care about. I, I'm okay. Hold on. It's not all crap, but double or nothing wasn't bad. No, but anyways, I rather watch an independent show. I really would. I'm an independent I, guy. I'm always have been always well I ever since I found it I have been and I'm I'm going to say it all I'd rather go to indies all day long every day. Uh but I really look forward to getting back to the Diesel Concert Lounge. Danny and I say we got to get there a little early so we can play some pinball. You guys should. You know what? We've uh actually the boys in the locker room have talked about putting together a pinball tournament. I'm in. And and like videoing that for social media. There you go. That's, yeah, let's do it. Oh, I'm in. All right. But again, guys, don't forget to subscribe to Rass and Rage. Make sure you check the description for Podbean and all that stuff. And follow Giuseppe on his social media and Rising Action Wrestling. Again, Giuseppe, thank you so much for joining me. And everybody, have a great, great day. Rage. Do it now. This is wrestling rage. This is wrestling rage.